I haven't made a video in a very long while, and I just realized I don't have my usual background because it's a new laptop, and I haven't put it on here yet. But I wanted to just make a, a quick video. Um, it's been it's been a while, but um, uh, someone had a question on my um, truth truth about tensors video. Um, about uh, tangent bundles and vector fields. So they say, thanks for the video. I'm studying uh, manifolds. Okay, they, they say a bunch of stuff like what they've understood. You can go read the comment. Um, but their question is, but now I'm struggling to understand how the idea of smooth flow of arrows geometrically can be phrased with some form of continuity on a map from M to the tangent bundle of M, the manifold, using these ideas. Could you please help me see how it is that making this map smooth in the sense of manifolds uh, from M to its tangent bundle is what we want to match our geometric picture? So uh, let's dive into that. Um, so uh, I'll just make a new page here. Um, so here's the idea. I just figured instead of writing out a comment, it's just easier to make a quick video explaining these ideas. So we imagine that we have some um, manifold and probably as an easy example, like we, we can think about the earth um, and, you know, to good approximation, we'll, we'll think about it as just a, a sphere. And um, let's say we want to describe the flow of wind across the surface of the earth, right? So we've got, you know, maybe here there's be like big gusts of, of wind. And then over here, I don't know, there's a hurricane happening or something and small swirls and, you know, there's other swirls. And then maybe over here, the wind is very slow, you know, so at any point in time, we, we want to, you know, we imagine taking a snapshot and we're trying to describe the wind. So... Um, how could we, how can we describe like the motion of wind at a snapshot in time? Well, we can imagine, um, what the, you know, cause everything is sort of, it's all just air. So we just imagine it this sort of, it's not going to be uniformly distributed, but again, just to explain the idea of imagine with this like uniformly distributed, uh, sort of, of mass of air. Maybe we don't even need it to be uniformly uh, distributed. Um, but the point is, is is like at each point, um, we want to describe the velocity of the wind, right? So we want to have some sort of arrow um, pointing in the direction that the wind is moving in at that point and the magnitude of arrow corresponding to the speed with which the wind is moving. Um, you know, to, to just give you another example, we could imagine a river. So, so here our, our manifold is the sphere. Here, um, what would our? I, I was gonna say it's in R two, but but you know the river is like. Uh, um, I guess we could imagine the three D volume as well. Let's just imagine the two D volume, right? So this is some I don't know infinite rectangle, right? So it's like the the real numbers cross the interval zero one or something. We could imagine this is our manifold. And again, you know, maybe maybe over here, the the water, right? So you could you want to describe the flow of this whole uh, moving body of water. You could describe that by sort of saying what each particle or at each point in space describing the flow of water through there. And so you could describe that again in terms of well to that point. You assign a vector that tells you you know if you if you have some particle of water, some molecule of water is just entering right at that point, you you tell the direction and the speed, you know, with which it's going to point out. So so it, it could be it could be the same everywhere. One one could imagine like a constant uh flow of water through a pipe or um, you know, maybe for some reason it gets a little bit uh, uh, deeper or shallower or something. So one could also imagine that at different points, like the river speeding up, or maybe it's sloped downhill, something like this. Okay, so that's enough for the intuitive thing that we're trying to describe. How do we actually capture it? Or maybe a better question, um, at least for this this commenter, is well, how like why do we express it in the way that we do, right? 
So for example, um, what I mean by that is the, the basic definition of a, a vector field of um, on a manifold. So let me give you the technical definition. We'll connect it to this um, intuitive definition. So um, a vector field is normally uh, defined to be a smooth, so smooth map, uh, say iota from I to TM, which is a section of the projection map TM to M. Uh, in other words, what we mean by that, I probably said this in one of the videos, it's been so long since um, uh, I've, I've even looked at my own videos on that, uh, but such that uh, for all M in the manifold, pi of iota of M is equal to M. Okay. Uh, so what does that have to do with our picture above? Well, let's think about this. So, so as we just described, um, we the goal is to somehow come up with a way of assigning to each point in space a vector, right? And so our our tangent bundle, this is sort of one way of putting a collection of vector spaces related to our manifold all sort of together, right? And and the the tangent, so we somehow like, you know, we've got our tangent bundle, uh, a projection map down to our manifold, and then given any individual point, you know, we kind of imagine the whole uh, tangent space to this point uh, hovering, hovering above that point, right? So it's a whole vector space associated to that point. And so, um, so, in other words, right, I'm taking in, I want to come up with some rule that takes in points of my manifold and spits out a vector. So, well, that sounds like a function, right? It's taking in a piece of input, a point, and it's spitting out a, um, a vector, right? And so, and so, uh, well, that's, that explains why we have a map in the first place, a function from the underlying manifold to the tangent bundle, right? So this is, this is just a map. It's going to eat points in the manifold. It's going to spit out uh, vectors. The reason why we have it be a section, which is to say for all points, um, pi of iota of m spits m back out. This is just essentially what this is saying is making sure that if you pick um, like, if, if I assign a vector to some point M, I want to make sure that it actually is in the tangent space to that point, right? It wouldn't really make sense to take a point here and assign it an arrow that starts at another point, right? We want the arrows to actually be connected so that we're saying, ah, yes, this arrow is telling you about the speed and direction at this point in space. Um, and so that's that's all the section is saying. Like this is the same thing, basically, as saying that that we just ask that the um, that the vector associated to each point is in the tangent space at that point. Um, so so hopefully that is all pretty clear, right? This is all just formalizing. You know, we're using a function to talk about the process of of for each point picking out a vector. Um, the, the last thing that we might wonder is, well, why smooth in particular? Well, if, again, if you think about the real world scenario here, right? If we, if, if, if we think about this water, um, maybe I'll draw a pen. Things sort of change continuously in the real world, right? They can change really, really, really quickly, but it's, you're, you're not going to have, you know, something like a point like this and then sort of like, well, okay, there is no next point because it's it's an infinitesimal distance, but um, you shouldn't have some some crazy jump like this, or or it goes like this, and then all of a sudden in the, in the other direction, right? Um, things sort of they need to there, there can't be this immediate jump, um, 
or if we even imagine, so like if we imagine just a, a one dimensional line and we imagine things moving along this one dimensional line with some speed, right? So you can imagine if from like minus infinity up to two, let's say it's, it's a constantly moving to the right and then from two up to positive infinity. So let's say this is two here. Um, we had a bunch of arrows uh, all pointing to the left. I mean, that's never going to happen in the real world, right? Like if it changed, if it was going to change direction somehow, it would have to like slow down and stop first, even if really, really quickly. Um, so really, I mean, what I've just described could be accurately captured by continuity alone, right? So we could, um, in theory, just ask that this map be continuous. But um, the thing is, we're talking about smooth manifolds here, right? Um, and there is a notion of topological manifolds. You can take all the definitions. Um, well, not all of them, because we don't have like differentiable stuff and, and tangent spaces. But um, uh, you, can still, you can still talk about a lot of these concepts just topologically. Um, but again, if we, we do have the smooth structure because we do want to perform uh, calculus on these spaces. And so uh, the idea is like, it, it really only makes sense. Like if you have like M itself is a manifold and the tangent space itself is a manifold, right? And so we sort of decided that the way that we relate two manifolds, which are these two topological uh, structures with smooth, like with differentiable structures on top of them, well, then we should compare them via some differentiable map, right? Like when we're talking about groups, the the way that we say the thing that should relate to groups is a group homomorphism, right? It should, it should somehow preserve some part of the structure we care about, right? A graph homomorphism should preserve adjacency. A topological homomorphism should... Um, well, pull back open sets. So in the same way, if you have two smooth manifolds, uh, well, the, the thing that we want to be able to compare them with should be a smooth map as well, because then we can actually say theorems about going back and forth um, between these two manifolds. If, if you don't demand that the smoothness, the smoothness of the map, then uh, just a whole bunch of structure gets, gets um, lost. Yeah. So that's basically it, right? So the 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 whole idea of of a vector field being defined in the way it is as it is as a smooth section um, of the tangent bundle projection. It's because we're literally so it's first it's a function from the manifold to the tangent space because to each point we want to assign a vector, um, and of course we we make it a section because we want the vector to actually be in the tangent uh, space to that point. Um, and then finally smooth because, well, that's that's the concept that we're working with when we're doing differential geometry. Uh, so I guess we'll leave it there and uh, thanks.